You know, I love it when I pretend that I can do my makeup and then I get on camera and it's like, <sighs> watching all those beauty gurus has done me no good. Let's get into the video. Hello everyone, my name is Monica and welcome back to my channel, Mooney Reads, where I talk about books and things. And yes, today I will be announcing the winner of the fantabulous giveaway that I was hosting. Also, can we talk about my hair for a moment? This is my like natural hair texture and my hair I think was like, like it was shocked. It was spooked. It was having like problems and I couldn't get it to look right. And this is actually what my hair looks like. And this is why I used to dress up as Bellatrix Lestrange when I had like long poofy hair with the white streak. It was just like the normal thing to dress up as Bellatrix Lestrange. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to do a October wrap up. And let me tell you, October sucked book wise. Like, we're there's going to be ranting in this video and then by the end we're all gonna end up happily picking somebody that's gonna win a book that i hope is none of these books because these books sucked monkey balls okay so i had to look it up on goodreads and honestly i didn't read a lot of books that i physically own which if you remember my video about my october tbr i really wanted to get my physical tbr down but this book this book just ruined that for everyone. <laughs> this is Daphne du Maurier's Jamaica Inn. And you guys know I love Daphne du Maurier. I love her writing. I love Rebecca. It's one of my favorite all-time books. And I love my cousin Rachel. And I read this and I was completely, completely not only unamused, I was angry. I was angry reading this book because it's so bad. And then I started to audiobook it because by the way, it's free on YouTube. It's free on YouTube to, to listen to. And I, it was just not amusing. The main character is a bore. She is, it's just really obvious to me that I, well, I don't know if this was written before or after she, she wrote My Cousin Rachel and, um, Rebecca, but I think her writing is way better in those and I think for now this is a DNF I'm still keeping it in my library because I want to have it like it's one of those things that I'm okay with having But that I'm not really happy about this tells the story of a girl who you know She hasn't been so lucky in her life. She's down on her luck. Her mom dies and she has to go live with her aunt she remembers her aunt like this really like classy ass lady that like used to like dress in pretty dresses and whatever. And when she goes to her, she finds out that she's living at Jamaica Inn. Now Jamaica Inn, the cool thing is, is a real place that you can go stay at. It's um, in a place that I can't pronounce. I'm sorry, British people, I can't pronounce your, your places. But anyway, she goes there and she finds out that it's not all that it's cracked up to be and in fact people try to deter her from going there because a young woman like her shouldn't be in a place like that so there she like meets this really abusive uncle and her her like um aunt is just like a mess and everything's just a everything's a mess baby we're just not like mm -mm. and then she meets the and the it's and then there's apparently like is it supernatural? Are there like are there supernatural things happening? Are there not? That part I really did like, but the rest of it like sucked so bad. <laughs> it was so bad. So um, this put me in the biggest reading slump ever, like ever. So I um, started off really bad, the, like because I I was I had such high hopes for this book because it's Daphne du Maurier. I love her. I love her writing. Jamaica Inn sounded so great, like a, a, a story based on a real place. It was great. And then it sucked ball. So um, I didn't read it. Uh, don't plan to read it anytime soon. So there's that. I can't find my copy of Obelisk Gate anywhere. Like I've looked everywhere. I think I just stuck it somewhere where it's not <laughs> visible to me. But the next book I read, I'll insert the title, like the book here, it's um, The Obelisk Skate by N.K. Jemisin. Now, as you know, this is the continuation to the fifth season. In a video, I said The Fifth Wave, which is definitely not an N.K. Jemisin book, but I did read The Obelisk Skate by 
um, and Kate Jemison. I finished it. It was good. It wasn't as good as the fifth season in my mind. Um, and I can't tell you much about it without going in, into spoiler territory, but we continue on with the story of one of the main characters that was introduced in the first book, which is Esun. Esun is looking for her daughter. Her husband uh, kidnapped her after she killed her um, their son and he just kidnapped her because he found out that she is an origin. An origin is a person that is basically an earthbender. But that's like the best way I can describe it. I'm so sorry. But that's what um, they do. And now a fifth season has started. I really loved this book. I gave this book a four star because there's a character in this book called Alabaster. We meet him in the first book and he's my absolute favorite character. And I just, I loved him. Every part where he was in, I was like in love because I just feel like he's a really well-made character. Like this book has a lot of really amazing women, but I feel that um, the men in this book are also described amazingly and that doesn't always happen. We either have one or the other, like either the women are awesome or the men are awesome. And um, just their story and his tragedy just like caught me it, it took me it just took me away and um this book deals a lot with grief that's why i had put it down originally because i was dealing with grief myself so i, I just couldn't do it you know like that <laughs> so um yeah this book was just great but there there is a but you start to see how the series goes from sci-fi to fantasy and i think that that is brilliant on a and k jemison's side like how can you start a, a series as a sci-fi and then finish it like a fantasy and she really does that she really really like manages to genre bend these books in such a way that it's just incredible i i i, I commend her i think that she is an incredible writer the only thing is that the next book i picked up is the stone sky by nk jemison i really want to love this i really want to love it but, like I said, we went from sci-fi to fantasy. And I am not a fantasy reader. I don't like fantasy. I don't like the way fantasy is told. I don't like the tropes in fantasy. And this one really, really does. It, like, reminds me, like, to the point where it gets a little bit Lord of the rings E. And I just don't... I'm not connecting as much. Because, of course... When you go into a book expecting certain things and you get something else, it just kind of like, Ugh, you know, like it, 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 it's not like I'm like, ew, this book sucks, but it does kind of mess with your expectations. So I'm currently about a third of the way through this, but I had to put it down because again, between Daphne du Maurier's The Loving Spirit and this, I ended up in a really, really bad reading slump. So um, I want to finish it. I want to like love this story. I, I've been told the ending is amazing and I can't wait for the ending. But for now, I'm putting it down because I just wasn't interested in a fantasy story. And that's kind of what I got with this book. Again, the writing is incredible. Everything is amazing. I just it's it didn't meet my expectations therefore i put it down but i'm planning on picking it back up next up we gotta talk about this shit right here okay this is harlan ellison and um this includes the story i have no mouth and i must scream and it also includes other stories i only read i have no mouth and i must scream and i actually read it again i found the audio on youtube it's for free there's a few of them but there's one i will link it down below in particular where i just uh i was reading as i was listening and it was incredible um this is the most fucked up shit i have ever read in my life like like there nothing nothing compares to how fucked up this story was. And if you wanna know, Harlan Ellison wrote this in one night and then he just made some corrections in the morning and like it won a Hugo Award. And let me tell you, it deserved that Hugo Award because it, it just like walks on the edge on being a little bit too, not intense, but like, you know when you know an author is trying too hard to be intelligent and we'll get to that a little bit later 
but it walks the line of 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 that of the author being a little bit too crazy but it doesn't go there like it doesn't get to the point where you don't understand what's going on you perfectly understand what's going on basically this computer was created by humans to fight wars for it and in the end the computer became self-aware and it realized that it it was created by humans but that humans used it to do horrible things so he so i'm sorry he it <laughs> so it brings these i believe five humans into its consciousness kind of matrix like and tortures them over and over and over and over and the tortures are it, they're they're intense and i i would argue that the female representation in here is not very good um i've heard something about Harlan Ellison and you know female representation but um, I really enjoyed what I read I haven't read much more from him but this is seriously going to be like this has nothing on annihilation when it comes to disturbing shit like this is just straight up crazy and just the title alone and and how it ends if you want to read something truly truly creepy that for a while like this is like one of those things that i'm gonna have in the most haunting things i've ever read in my life because sometimes i'm just sitting there and i'm like shit i have no mouth and i must scream exists Ugh. so i really recommend that you pick this up i can't speak for his other stories because i didn't read those i set out to read i have no mouth and i must scream and i must say it really did not disappoint. It was an incredible, incredible read. And like I said, I will link the YouTube video down below where you can find this um, in audio format for free. Here comes part of the video where everyone unsubscribes, but that's okay. Then I read Mexican Gothic. Did I read? Yeah. Then I read Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. And I absolutely hated this book hated it okay i didn't hate it yeah okay i hated it a little bit basically let me tell i'm not gonna spoil anything but let's just say when your main protagonist is so hot then even the mushrooms on the wall want to fuck her you made a really boring mc and, and and seriously everyone in this book wants to fuck the main character the grandpa wants to fuck the main character the brother wants to fuck the main character the other brother wants to fuck the main character and their grandmother if you know what i mean wants to fuck this main character also i'm sorry this the the, the scary atmosphere is just basically a creepy house it's just a creepy house and i do get do not even try to go at me where, oh, Monica, you're not understanding the whole, like, colonialism. I think, shut up. I'm Latin American. I grew up in Latin America. I get, I get what was trying to be said. And I think it did say that in a semi, what is that called? Semi, not constructive, semi, like it, it made it, like it did it. Okay, it, it was fine. It was fine. But it just, it was just annoying and also kind of, I mean, I will never look at a mushroom the same way again after I was told that it looked like a penis. Do you know how many penis references there are in this book? And I really dislike the whole Latin American is, look, is looked at like a beautiful woman that of course is a virgin because... Of course she's a virgin. And then here come the colonizers to rape her. And oh my God, if I, every time a ghost rapes a woman in a story, I'm docking a star. That's it. That's it. Do, really? Is that what we're going to go with? And also, again, the, she, there's a part where she licks a wall. And then the end. Oh my God, the end. If you want me to do a full-on spoiler rant review of why I think Mexican Gothic is not effective and it also is kind of weird and just annoying, let me know because I could go on for out Again, just the fact that the main character is so hot that everyone wants her. And of course, it's just the... Oh my god, I fucking hate the end of this book so much. Like it 
Like it just built like and built and built and built. And then it was like, guess what? Let's just throw that to the ground because the MC needs to be together with this one guy. Clearly. So I just hated this book. Like I'm, I, I'm, I feel so bad because I know somebody got it to, for me for my birthday. And I feel bad that I'm hating on it. But I already talked to, to Sarah and she hated it too. <laughs> so it's fine. But it was so bad. It was so bad. Like there, there are, there's no, nothing redeeming. Effective. The word I was looking for before was effective. But anyway, it does it to a semi-effective thing. But, but there's nothing redeeming here. Nothing. The main character I thought was kind of interesting. But then she does do the whole not like other girls thing. Because of course. And then just the way. Like. I don't like that book. I'm, I'm, I'm really angry because I am always like, please, let's do Latine good things so that people see us as more than just magical realism writers and literary fiction writers. Let's do sci-fi and other things. And, and, I, and I had high expectations and high hopes for this book and it let me down. It like let me, it let me fall just like I'm going to let it fall right now. Oh. Dear, dear Lord, that was, that was a lot. That was a lot to get through. But anyway, and then we get to the only book I like this month. Is it the only book? The only, like, yep, it is the only book I like this month. And that was Moon of the Crusted Snow uh, by, I'm going to say, I'm going to try to say Wageshi, Wageshi, I'm, I'm trying, Wageshi Rice, who is a First Nations author. Now, now this is how you do post-apocalyptic, my friends. Oh my gosh. Oh. I'm so glad that I enjoyed one of the books that I read this month because really the rest were like, please somebody like, see, this was truly a spooky, scary month for me when it came to reading because everything was shit. But anyway, Moon of the Crusted Snow is about a First Nations reserve in Canada. Now, this First Nation reserve hasn't had a lot of um, like electricity or stuff like that for a long time but finally they had put it up and everything was fine but one day they wake up and everything is off like computers are off um the the electricity is basically not working very well they're not getting satellite they're not getting tv but because of where they are where it's so remote they um they're like you know shit happens it maybe the snow is like fucking with things it's fine until they realize that it's not and that the electricity might not be coming back. And there are two characters that are studying in a university nearby. And when they come back to the reserve, they come back like in hiding. And they're all like, everything is fucked up in the city. Like people are going crazy. Somebody died and we don't know why they died. And things are just not going well. So they were like, don't worry. We are isolated from everybody. But are they really? Are they that isolated? Are people not going to follow their tracks? And what happens when the electricity might not come back? And when and how are they going to get through winter? And there is a this book it, this book is amazing. This book is exactly what I feel would happen if like electricity just went off or or like if we didn't have cell phones. And the cool thing is it, that it really touches on the fact that like uh, First Nation people, sorry, my cat is about to turn off my microphone. Okay. And that the fact that First Nations people are ready to hunt and things like this, because this is how they've been taught and the way they've been living and how a apocalypse would look like for them, not in the big city, because we know what would happen in the big city. But they don't have a 7-Eleven they can go and, and get shit at. They don't have that kind of stuff. They just have each other and they have to rely on each other. And I love how this book plays with my personal favorite monster, which is the Wendigo. I love the Wendigo. I love the, the like story of the Wendigo. And here they play that up a lot. So um, just, oh gosh, if you do anything, please pick up moon of the crusted snow by this wonderful author whose name i'm not going to continue to butcher because i'm just like I, I i tried to look up pronunciations but i i couldn't find them 
um, and I am also really badly prepared. So <laughs> um, just this is an amazing book, and especially to read during the winter months. You're gonna love. That's my cat, by the way. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna love it. You're gonna love it because there's like so much snow and 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 talk about the snow and and and, and like that waiting for for spring to come. It's just incredible. Then I read The Luminous Dead by Caitlin Starling. I read this because everybody was like, Monica, The Luminous Dead is an amazing story and it's so creepy and scary. You know what was creepy and scary? The fact that I fucking had to read that book. Oh my god, was it bad. That, there was nothing scary about that book. There was nothing scary. And the worst part is that the payoff is shit. Like, Okay, let's, I'm gonna not spoil it, but I'm, let's pretend that I have a boyfriend and that boyfriend has enough money where he can like drug me and mistreat me and um, I'm scared to leave him because he's got enough money to help me solve the mystery of my missing mother. And in the end, I just forgive him and everything's fine. Oh, and I find out that he killed like a bunch of his other girlfriends, but it's, it's fine. He also has a tragic backstory. Seriously, this book, the only creepy thing that I found about this book was um, the way she, one of the characters has to eat because she has to go down. I, I, like, I'm, I, I'm, I didn't even tell you what it's about. I gave it two star, but basically this character has to go into a cave and then in that cave, she has to find like something. We're not going to talk about what. She has to find something and she has this suit which is meant to protect her and stuff. And she can't just normally eat because reasons, but she has like her intestine is like stuck onto the suit and she like like takes things and like puts it in and the way the way it's described is just really like ugh, it really got to me. It really got to me. So I hated it. Hated it everything. But I didn't hate it the, as much as I read The Silence by Don DeLillo. What a pretentious piece of crap. It's so bad. Like, I can't even begin to explain to you how bad it is. It's about, uh, again, it's the same idea as Moon of the Crusted Snow, but take away any literary merit and put on a bunch of white people just shit. Like, I don't even know how to explain how bad it is because it's like, you know when a book is trying too hard to be intelligent? That's this book. This book is trying way too hard to be intelligent. Like, it's trying too hard to be literary fiction when really, it's it's it it doesn't make any sense. It's stupid. I just fucking hate this book. It's about again, um, everything turns off. El all electricity, all satellites, all cell phones even turn off. Like you can't turn on your cell phone. So um, it's about what happens. And apparently what happens is somebody talks a lot about Einstein and somebody talks to their TV and um, a wife, a, a, the wife of one of the main characters has sex with one of her ex-students that is apparently um, autistic in the kitchen while the husband is still waiting for the game to cam come back on. It's so bad. It's so, I don't even wanna think about it anymore. You know, Maybe that was the point of it. Maybe I was supposed to be scared because it was so bad. And then I read <laughs> Drowning in the Deep, uh, no, Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant. I finished this book on uh, November the 1st, but I'm counting it because I started it reading it, you know, on the 30th, so I'm counting it. Whatever. Um, and I also didn't want to end up with fucking Don Dolillo's piece of shit novella. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm being very intense. Um, I'm sure. Don DeLillo really did try, but he was trying way too hard. But I didn't want to end on that note. So um, I read Into the Drowning Deep. Hmm. I gave it three stars. It was okay. I think it was, a, I think this is like a great B horror movie read. Like if you, you know those, the, you know like Anaconda and that, that kind of like creature feature, that that's what we're going to get here. It's not like some big, incredible, uh, I don't know. I don't, it's not like it's, it doesn't have like a bunch of literary merit. It's just a fun creature feature. Some parts really did scare me, and then there was this one part where you get a whole chapter from Dolphin's perspective. Miragrat decided that we needed the perspective of Dolphin's to tell us part of the story. I'm sorry, <laughs> but it's so bad. <laughs> and then, and then. What, here's here, here's a here's a question 
for you. What would you do if you are in a boat and you see a killer siren rip your best friend's head off? Do you A, run away, be traumatized, cry the whole time, and probably hide in the boat in a safe place? Do you B, jump after them, you know, to try to save them? Or C, have sex with the main character of the book? Yeah, yeah, you don't pick C! You don't, like, she just, like, the character just, oh yeah, my best friend was just killed by Siren, let's have sex. Like that, what the fuck? Like, that doesn't happen! But it does in this book. So, um, yeah, those are all the books I read this month. <laughs> It was a bad month reading wise. I finished I don't know how many books I finished. I finished I'm, I, I have them here. I finished one two three four five six seven books, which is not that bad. I also did start uh, Waking Gods, which I have right here, but I just didn't feel like continuing. I don't know I wasn't feeling it. So I was like I'm gonna put it down for now. I also did well I started the stone the stone sky um, yeah, there, I started a bunch of books, but then I was like, I'm not feeling this, so I just stopped. Because that's what we do in Monica Land. By the way, so, you, so we're clear, I didn't make the rules, but spooky season stays until November 30th. And then I'll, I'll Christmas it up for you. I fucking hate Christmas. I'm like the Grinch of Christmas. But anyway, anyway, thank you so much for watching, and now... Let's pick a winner for that giveaway. So what I did was I made a Google Drive document with everybody's name that left a comment on that video. Thank you so much for everyone that participated and good luck to everyone. And what I'm going to do is there were a total of exactly 60 people that join the giveaway so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use a random number generator somebody was at the door so as i was saying i'm gonna uh do a random number generator and then i'm gonna match that number to the list that i have down here of people that participated so i'm gonna generate okay the number i got just so you know i'm not cheating is 52 and 52 i have here is you can't catch Z! Yay! Congratulations! I have it right here. You can see. I don't know if you're going to be able to see. Well, you're not going to be able to see. <laughs> but anyway, uh, congratulations Z. I'm so happy for you. And don't worry, there's going, there is going to be more giveaways coming up. I, I, I'm going to be honest. I was very nervous to do this one because it's the first one that I've ever done. So uh, yes, thank you so much for, for participating. Thank you for getting me to this milestone of 1K and I have been boring you for enough. So without further ado, I bid you adieu with a reminder that I post every Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. However, that might change coming up to Tuesdays, um, Thursdays and Sundays. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But um, right now with my work schedule, it's just really hard to film on Sundays because I also work Saturdays. It's just, it's been a mess. So, um, yeah, I'll let you know anyway. But yeah, without any further ado, I bid you adieu. And I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. Thank you so much. Bye. This video is going to be a doozy to edit.